everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're heading to the local shooting range uh, here in Anchorage, Alaska. We have one public shooting range called the, um, the Rabbit Creek Shooting Range. Uh, they open in about 20 minutes. Uh, we should be there by opening time. It's a Thursday morning so hopefully there's not too much people. It's the winter season. Usually there's not that many folks during the winter season. You know it's not hunting season. Uh, sometimes it's too cold and of course ammo is expensive so uh, there's gonna be people but not too much people so I have a new rifle that I want to go sight in so I'll show you guys that once we get there come along enjoy the vlog it's about a quick 15 minute commute to the range right here so I figured I'd talk to you guys a little bit um, this range here they charge about 15 bucks per day uh, they do have annual pass and season pass but I don't shoot that much to justify buying it um, they have two separate ranges next to each other um, the pistol range and then the long rifle slash shotguns uh, carbine stuff like that but the farthest out they have is only 100 yards so I only go to this range when I just need a sight in my rifle at 100 yard uh, when I want to go do more tactical shooting uh, practice my reloading my magazine reloading all that fun stuff then I go out of town so that's the reason why I'm going over here you know it's it's not worth wasting gas to go all the way out of town um, they provide they provide the uh, the target stand and all that stuff uh, you can rent a less lead you can rent a, um, a spotting scope. Um, you just have to bring your own paper target. Bring your own paper target, and I highly, um, highly recommend you guys bring like a staple, so you can staple your paper target onto the uh, onto their um, their target stand, which is like cardboard and stuff like that. So, show you guys a little bit of that if you guys are new to Anchorage and you guys want to go check out the shooting range. Current temperature this morning is 21 degrees. Pretty chilly, but you just got the dress warm. I believe the rain share, they usually have the heater as well. So on top of each uh, shooting bay, there is the heater. So hopefully they have that activated today and uh, we can stay cozy out here. It is an outdoor range, not an indoor. Look at that, beautiful morning. Well, here's the shooting range and I only see one car out here. So it looks like we might have the range to ourselves. Over here, you have some staff parking and then some other educational class that they do over here. So it's always nice to have the range to herself. Or at least nice and quiet. Perfect, so this is it. Rabbit Creek shooting range. Give you guys a quick tour. Pretty simple guy, nothing crazy. I got my bag here. My bag has my ammo, my targets, and my uh, Air Pro, and stuff like that. So let's go and get loaded up and uh, pay the guys. And then we'll set up our station and go from there big case here this is a brand new case I got from sportsman's warehouse pretty excited to shoot my new rifle so I haven't told you guys about this rifle but I bought this rifle like three months ago like way back then uh, didn't come out to shoot it yet because I didn't buy a, I haven't bought a scope and then I just got a scope last week got it mounted on my brother helped me mount it on so now we're just gonna test it out make sure it's zeroed in and uh, test some of the ammunition I got like four brands of ammo uh, to test from and I'll show you guys that so this is it right here so this first range is the rifle and then the other one way down there is the uh, pistol range just got done paying the lady at the counter 20 bucks uh, it's 15 bucks to for day pass and then it's five bucks to borrow the lead sled I don't have a lead sled yet because I don't shoot enough I might buy one one day they usually run about 120 140 bucks from Cadwell so this is it right here it's actually not that cold today it's really warm now so we got the whole range to ourselves <laughs> this is what happened when there's an ammo shortage or not ammo shortage but when ammo is expensive uh you just have the whole range to yourself so i might take on i might stay on this i might stay way over here actually just stay way over here i'll stay at this last one here this has a big uh big open area so i'm gonna set my stuff down real quick and then i'm gonna get my uh i'm gonna go set up my uh set up my target stand and then I'll show you guys everything later okay so I'm gonna set up two of these guys these are 100 yard side in we're actually gonna switch the shooting stand we're on the handicap one so we got to move to the next one here push so bay two is the correct one pretty simple and like I said bring your staple a lot of people use tape and stuff uh, don't use tape tape isn't good enough it's gonna fall off so at one for now and then go from there so let me go ahead and get this set up and we're gonna do our first one at 25 yards all right looks like we got another shooter coming in so 25 yards and usually they have the heater right here so look you can press the heater on 
We're gonna sit for 30 minutes and we got some nice heat up here. Okay, let's get the rifle out. Yeah, pro. Got my range finder, but don't think I need it. This is right here. You guys can take a wild guess. In the next 15 seconds, I'll buy you guys ice cream. Hurry up. 10 seconds. What do I have in here? Five seconds. All right, you guys guessed it. You guys got it right or not. So here it is. Holy rail. Look at that. Let me go ahead and unload it real quick. Let's unload it right now. Here it is. So I got four different ammo. First one we're gonna do is the Federal 300 uh, 150 grain, and then we'll move to the Barnes. <coughs> we might not even do all of them. This is the Bar 165, Barnes 190. You're good to go. All right, clear. Yep. Barnes 190, and then Nosler. So I'm gonna break it in, and then we'll see how it goes from here on. Uh, we're gonna shoot three rounds, let it cool for 15 minutes because this is a very skinny barrel. And then go from there. Uh, I found this 308 right here. It might might be a defective one, but we'll hold on to it. So we're gonna let this guy set up real quick, and then we'll go from there. Now, uh, when there's not a lot of people out here, like say it's just me or one person, uh, there's no range officer. It's just us, and usually we can just handle it ourselves. We just tell each other that we're clear or not. So that's pretty cool. So yep, we're gonna wait till he gets back. And then we'll get it load up. Let me go ahead and load up some federal right now. We'll do three rounds. Oh, we're actually gonna bore sight it first. So I'm gonna go ahead and bore sight it and then I'll start shooting and go from there. All right, everyone. So this is my 300 Brownie X boat with the Arkin 5x25 by 56 EP5. Super sweet. I'll show you guys more of it later, but you guys know how it is. I'm not gonna show you guys a full walkthrough. This is it right here. Let me go ahead and get it bore sighted. So bore siding, gotta remove the boat out. We're all the way at five. Put you guys over here. Damn, this is five, this is five magnification. We're gonna bore side it. barely see all right so we're sighted on the bore and This will get us close to it. Okay, so now we're good to go. It's pretty exciting, 300. This is my first time shooting a 300, actually. So right now, we're shooting the Federal 150 grain, guys. I'm gonna put some extra protection on. It's gonna be loud. Twenty-five parallax. We're at five times magnification. Huh. Okay, here we go. First three hundred. Wow. That was pretty insane. It felt good. So I don't I don't know where I hit, but let me take a look. 
Let me see where I hit. Uh, pretty close, actually. I can't really see it. I gotta take out my other camera. Let me zoom in real quick. Oh wow, we are one inch high and one inch left right, so we're right on the dot. That's pretty crazy, right out of the box, man. That's pretty good. Let's do one more shot. Out of the box, man, pretty dead on. I'm gonna go six power. Same spot, wow. So I need to go, I need to go one MOA to the left and just a slightly down. So we're at 25 yards, so that's 16 clicks. Yeah, so 16 clicks, so let's do that. This thing is pretty damn accurate. It's unbelievable, man. So we need to go down. Sixteen. Okay, so I make my adjustment. So third round, let's do it. Twenty-five yard, baby. I think we went the wrong way, huh? I'm gonna let it cool down for 15 minutes and then we'll start shooting again. Federal 150 grain. Bullet number four. We're definitely, uh, we adjusted wrong for sure. So we need to go. Bullet number five. Getting closer. That went right. This is round six. I need to go down one inch. So go down. Huh? It's so weird. It's like opposite. Okay, I gotta let the cool, I, I gotta let it cool down, man. This is our ninth ammo. We're high. Bulls eyes. Okay, we're good now. So we're good on the federal. <coughs> we're gonna do one more confirmation shot. Pretty close, guys. One more. I'm gonna do one more round, and then we're gonna let it cool down. Bull's eyes. All right, we're good at 25 yard now. I'm gonna lock it in. So here is our first look at the 25 yard Federal 150 grain. <laughs> um, we have it set to 100 yard. We're gonna let it cool down. I got uh, we got two shooters on top of myself now. So my first rounds, um, I think I did over. My first round was right here. <coughs> so these first three, <coughs> besides the bulls out, these first three right here were my first one, and then I adjusted it, and I'm I adjusted it. I guess I went the wrong way, so I did two of these up here. Went the wrong way. 
<coughs> readjust it, got up to right here, adjust it again, got up to right here, <coughs> and then adjust it one more time, didn't really quite, I couldn't get the, uh, I guess I'm still understanding the way, I, I keep getting it mixed up as far as the uh, windage, got it right here, and then my second to last, and then, no, my third to last, and then my second to last, and then I did my final adjustment, and we got the bullseyes right here. So this is a 25 yard, good to go. We're locking at 25 yard now. We're gonna go ahead and do 100 yard, and we're gonna finish using the Federal. I'm gonna use all the Federal, and then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and sight in using the Barnes or either the, um, the Nosler, which are gonna be a heavier green. So this is a 25 yard Browning 300 Win Mag Federal 150 grain. Uh, I could have sighted in much faster, but I guess this is it's been a while since I played with the rifles and scopes So definitely use your ear right here, but this is pretty good damn out of the box This is with the uh, these first three was because of the bore sighting so from bore sighting alone That is pretty damn good for a group right there one inch less than an inch group the GoPro died So I couldn't feel myself shooting <coughs> at a hundred yard <coughs> But here's the federal hundred yard when I first shot after sighting in at 25 yard I was getting shots way up here. I adjusted, came down to here, came down to here, and then I adjusted again, and I went from here <coughs> to here, and then I ran out of the Federal. So now we're still at 100, and we're gonna be shooting the 165 Barnes, and I'll show you guys how that goes. So still trying to narrow it down. This is all news or air. Um, if you guys knew what you were doing, you could probably get the side in ready, but this is probably just me right here, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep playing with the rifle. Super fun. 100 yard Barnes TX. This is the 165 grain. So we're gonna do three rounds of this and see how that goes. This is the 300 Barnes 165. The first few shots <coughs> were these three. I got one to bullseyes. And then I shot this one, went far left again. Shot this one, went high, low. Went far left, readjusted, and then came back to bullseye. Uh, so I think I it's definitely just me. And also I'm kind of... I shot all these rounds without letting the gun cool down. So right now I'm going to let it cool down for at least 15 minutes and then we're going to be shooting on Barnes 190 grain. Uh, this is all at 100 yards. So far it's pretty much bullseye right now. But I think I was losing track of them because they were, they were getting, the bear was getting too hot. This is a very, uh, they do got some nice bathroom in here. <coughs> Water, fountain or heat. So definitely good bathroom for you to use if you get too if you gotta use the restroom or if you gotta wash your hand or if you need to warm up your hands. That's a plus. 100 yards. Okay, so this Barnes 190 was going off super, super weird. I'm not sure if it's me or the rifle or the ammo. <clears throat> Maybe I didn't let the gun cool down enough. But look at how this gun went. It went from it went from that one to this one to this one to this one. So I'm not sure why it did that. I don't know how this one got way over here. I was shooting way over here. But I don't know. We'll go ahead and put a new target and try again. Barnes 190. I'm going to do one more round of the Barnes 190. See how that goes. Let the gun cool down for a good 20 minutes. 
and then do 100 yards, three rounds or four rounds of the Nosler, and then call it a day. Uh, we've been out here for two hours already. Okay, last target, 100 yard. <coughs> I was shooting really weird. I don't know where, what the heck was going on, but I was shooting and then I just started adjusting and went everywhere. Uh, I think this is enough today. So I didn't shoot the nozzler. We're gonna save that for another day. That's it right there. And um, yeah, we shot like a lot of ammo already. I think over 200 bucks worth of ammo. So uh, I got kind of frustrated. So I think I'm gonna save it for another day. Get the get the rifle clean up and then we'll come back during the springtime when everything's nice and warm and then we'll focus more on doing it but so far fun day uh the browning performed really great in general and i think some of the best shots was from the federal the cheap federal ones so we'll see how and uh these right here are two bucks a piece so if, if you need to rent them um the scope is two bucks two bucks so definitely worth renting it versus buying it Okay, so conclusion, now that we're in the vehicle, it's nice and quiet, you're not hearing gunshots. Uh, the Browning was amazing. I love it, I love it. I love the rifle itself, but again, it has a very skinny barrel, so you have to let it cool down. If you start shooting more than four or five plus rounds in one uh, one segment, your bullet's gonna be going, and I kinda, I did do that. I did some of that, um, you know, maybe it's just impatience, but the Browning shot amazing. The Arkin is really nice. I was shooting for around five, to, um, five power up to ten power. I wasn't going up more than twelve power. Once you get to twelve power, it's getting really blurry, and I knew about that already. But the Arkin, uh, the scope was really nice. <coughs> um, I think I shot best with the Federal. I'm best with the Federal. Um, once I started shooting those heavier grain, <coughs> um, those are all 100 yards, and I think I just had to do more. It's been a long time since I shot any rifle, so I was getting really confused because I know that in when, when I when I took our rifle in high school, uh, when you want to adjust elevation, let's say if the bullet is high and you need to go down, you twist the elevation knob down like a bottle cap. But I think it's the opposite on the scope. So when my elevate when my bullet was hitting high, and I need to adjust to go down. You're supposed to turn it counterclockwise, like the bottle cap. So that's what was confusing me. So I need to figure out how it actually is. But when we were in riflery, you know, it was the concept like this: Hey, if your bullet is high, and you're trying to get down to bullseyes, you you turn your um, elevation knob down, just like a bottle cap. And <laughs> same thing with um, windage. You know, if you need to go right, you turn it um, clockwise but it's actually the other way i believe on the scope so it's really confusing even though the scopes the torts has the um right and left it was really confusing and i think that's what that's what was really messing with my brain so i need to play around more with it learn more about the scope because it's been a while so if you guys have knowledge feel free to throw knowledge at me and yell at me or whatever but yeah it's super fun i think we'll come back out here in the springtime um and take really really take our time come back out here in the springtime maybe i'll come out with somebody that has more experience and we'll really take the time shooting it uh, because i'm pretty sure it's just me adjusting it wrong like every time i was adjusting it i was going the opposite way of i was trying to go and then i adjusted back and then by that time the right the gun was already hot so you have to let it cool down again so that's super annoying now keep in mind that this rifle is going to be used for hunting i'm not going to be shooting all the time i'm not going to be doing long range shooting um, it's not for sport shooting and stuff like that so I just need to get this rifle dialed in and then store away when it's hunting season come um, Sight it again make sure it's still on zero and then after that it's pretty much done So I don't mind shooting too much ammo um, as long as we're using it for a purpose And in this case we went through a whole box of federal um, <coughs> The Barnes 165 I shot half of that the Barnes 190 I shot maybe six rounds or so of that and then the nozzler we didn't shoot any of the nozzler you guys know me the nozzler is my favorite one so i'm trying to save the nozzler once i get everything figured out and then i'll start shooting the nozzler but super fun day overall i loved it um there was lots of shooters coming in and out but not overwhelmingly packed so it was a really good day at the range um hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys next time on some more shooting videos uh, catch you guys next time much love